The Tarrant County Master Gardener Association has partnered with the Tarrant Regional Water District to encourage water conservation. TRWD maintains four area lakes and pipelines needed to provide surface water to local water treatment plants so they can clean that water to meet drinking standards for our communities. There are currently 2.3 million people living in Tarrant County and this is expected to double over the next 50 years. At SaveTarrantWater.com, you can sign up for free weekly watering advice custom to your location. There's also an event calendar where you can find information about future classes and workshops. So be sure and check out SaveTarrantWater.com to sign up for their free services. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. We're going to talk about organic gardening today. My name is Steve Cheney. I'm a retired horticulturist at Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service here in Tarrant County. Uh, they asked me to talk a little bit about organic gardening, so that's what we're going to do. We can spend hours and hours doing it because there's so much, but we uh, only have a small amount of time, so we'll see what we can get accomplished. One little piece of trivia I thought I would tell you before we start is... You know, people ask what's organic and, you know, is everything organic and all those different questions. Well, a few years ago, I saw a store one day. I was, they had remodeled the grocery store where we went to and they had uh, tomatoes, just regular tomatoes, and they were a dollar a pound. And then I looked over and they had a new section they just created and it said organic tomatoes and they were a dollar fifty a pound. And then I looked over one more section and they had organically certified organic tomatoes and they were $2 a pound. And so I asked myself, I wonder what the difference is. So I asked the lady at the, at the store, she didn't know. And so I went home and looked it up to make sure. Well, the dollar a pound ones are just or grown any way you want to. And then the organically grown at a dollar fifty are using some organic practices, maybe not all, but some organic practices. And then the uh, certified organics are ones that use only organic practices and they have only used organic practices for X amount of years. And so that's the difference in cost. And so the, today I wanted you to think about as we talk about this, do you wanna be the dollar tomato? Are the dollar fifty tomato or the two dollar tomato? Not none of them are wrong. It's just what works best for you. So anyway, we'll talk a little bit more about organic gardening. Organic gardening versus conventional gardening. Organic relies on the natural systems and materials, while conventional gardening uses man-made uh, synthetic fertilizers and pesticides. Organic gardening respects the complex relationships between living organisms and in the plants. Well, the conventional garden views the soil and ecosystem as a medium in which to produce only. So why garden organically? That's a good question. You know, people ask that all the time. It benefits the environment and the wildlife, which is a good thing. You know, we need the wildlife and we certainly need the, the uh, environment as we get more and more people. It allows the garden to naturally stay in balance. And that's an important part. You know, as nature has been here, Mother Nature has been here a long time before we were here. And the better we can do to keep things in balance, closer to the way she had it set up and initially, the better off everybody's going to be. It keeps the plants and the and people healthy. It keeps the food supply clean. There are several effective organic ways to fight pests, which we'll talk about a few of them here in just a little bit, and then it builds up the soil, which makes the plants healthier and stronger. 90% organic, 10% common sense. And I think, you know, unfortunately, I think we've lost, a lot of us have lost common sense, and so it's trying to get that back. The main thing to think about when we start on this travel is that the soil is the engine of the garden and should be treated as a resource not just something to grow you know, not something to kick, not something to rinse off the patio, but something as a resource, because without it, we're certainly in a lot of trouble. Soil samples are the best th thing you can have to get started. You know, so if you're thinking about soils, you don't know anything about soils, maybe, or you don't know anything about the new place you just went to, get a soil sample. We have lots and lots of labs, lots and lots of ways of doing soil samples. 
but since I worked for AM for so long, we, we recommend AM's soil lab in College Station. So copy this down real quick. Soil testing, all one word, dot T A M U dot E D U. That's all you got to do. Put that in. Once you get that in, it'll come up the next screen and you go down to the bottom. It says our submittal forms. You click on that, scrolls to the next screen and you get urban soil submittal forms. It'll pull up the form and print it out and simply fill it in. And then you think, gosh, there's lots of choices and lots of things going on. Well, I would suggest you pick either number one, if it's at the bottom on the left or number six. Number one is just the basic soil sample. Number six is the basic plus organic matter. So that you'll know starting off how much, if any, organic matter you have in your soil. You follow the directions, send it in. Uh, in about 10 working days, you'll get a reply back and it'll give you an analysis of your soil and tell you everything you could ever think about and plus a few things you probably hadn't thought about. But it'll give you a good place to start so that you'll know what you need to add or know what you don't need to add. Um, you have an acidic soil bill or alkaline soil or whatever it may be. So try that. Do that before you get started and then refer back to it over every year and see if you're making headway. Organic garden soil. And, and when you're gardening organically, the soil provides everything. It's not only a growing medium, but a thriving biodiverse ecosystem, which supports all the plants in the garden. Uh, the plants that grow in the soil provide food and habitat for beneficial insects, birds, and lots of other garden critters. So that's why it's important to do it as organically as possible. Some of the critters work to pollinate plants. Uh, we, we're losing a lot of our pollinators throughout the world. And if we lose too many of them, at some point, we're not going to be able to grow any food. Then we're going to really be in trouble. So the, you know, they pollinate all the plants, they reduce the food for humans to eat. Everything works together to create a balanced ecosystem which enriches and supports the garden. Pollinators, where would we be without them? The bees, where you, all of us know that we're losing bees left and right. Uh, it's because we spray too many things, we use too many pesticides, we don't grow the things that the bees need. Uh, everybody panics when they see a bee. The bees don't want to sting you any more than you want to be stung. So work with them and let's survive. The term organic, you know, people like, okay, well, where did it come from? Why, why is it there? Why did they pick organic? Well, it was popularized by uh, J.L. Rodell in the mid 20th century to describe growing methods that avoided use of synthetic chemical fertilizers and pesticides. Rodell was a publisher, an inventor, and an avid reader who turned his focus towards natural methods of growing food as a way of promoting a healthy lifestyle. Although organic gardening didn't catch on immediately, it is now certainly returning to the mainstream for the good of all of us. Organic, what does it mean? Materials that are derived directly from plants or animals not something that came out of a lab. Organic gardening uses plant and animal byproducts to maintain soil, plant health, and doesn't rely on synthetically made fertilizers or pesticides. In chemistry, and remember back to college when you took chemistry, organic describes compounds that contain carbon. It may be small, all of those beneficial insects that we have out in our garden, but many of those arthropods, insects, the spiders, praying manids, uh, assassin bugs, or wasps, or tiger beetles are voracious predators that can take down a huge number of pest species. And that's what we need. You know, we don't need to run out there and, and take some harsh pesticide because we saw a uh, non-beneficial insect. Uh, you go out and spray them right away and, and cover everything most of them are non-selective and they will kill all insects, good and bad. Uh, and then we've got a problem. So ladybugs, lady beetles, lacewings, minute uh, pirate bugs, damsel bugs are also examples 
of some of the many beneficial insects that we have out there. Here's the ladybug larva. Uh, you know, and that's the interesting one is because right below it is the ladybug, but the one above it is the larva. And people would call me at the office for years and years and years. So I got this big, old, huge, ugly beetle. It's scary looking. It has orange spots on it. And I need to kill it before it gets me. Well, you kill it, then you don't have any of the lady beetles below. So think about that. Learn the, the larval stages. The larval stages actually are the ones that, in most cases, do more uh, feeding on the non-beneficial insects than anything else. The praying mantis is a great big, huge, green, prehistoric looking uh, insect, but it's a wonderful, wonderful name. It will not hurt you, I promise. Paper wasp, you know, nobody likes wasps, but the paper wasp are good. They will help uh, parasitize a lot of our different uh, insects. Uh, prevention is easier than treatment. You know, learning how to prevent them, you know, keep them from your garden. That's an important thing. It's always easier trying to stop them than it is the, when they're already infesting your plant. It seems hard to remember these tips, but in most cases, keeping your garden and soil healthy is a very, very important thing. A healthy garden full of microbes and beneficial insects buzzing around won't be where harmful insects want to hang out. Organic gardening uses methods such as crop rotation. You know, we, when we talk about crop rotation in our gardens, it's simply if you grow all your tomatoes in one end of the garden every year, at some point you exhaust that soil and you, you cause issues. So simply rotate them and grow them at the other end of the garden next next season. And then the next season, grow them in the middle of the garden. And the next season, maybe grow them in pots, whatever it may be, so that you're rotating it. Uh, and it is just much better for everything uh, and less chances of insect and nutrient problems. Uh, make sure you get some green manure and some compost back in that soil. Add it, you can't add too much. You know, somebody asked me one time, can you put it, how much is too much? Well, I mean, you literally have to put it several feet thick to be too much. And that's the only reason that would be too much is because it smothers everything out. Uh, No-till methods are important. You know, we don't want to till our gardens. And people say, well, how do I get the weeds up? How do I get it ready to plant? You know, stuff. Turn it over with a fork. Turn it over with something else besides a tiller. A tiller going through at their rapid speeds disrupts the microorganisms, it kills some of the basic insects that are in the soil, and it just tears up the soil itself so that it takes, you know, a long time for it to repair itself. The method, these methods do not disturb it and the microorganisms calling the soil home. For some reason gardeners choose to go organic, go healthy food, that's a good thing. Free of synthetic chemicals and avoid chemical residue. Support pollinators, you know, because you want to provide safe sources of food and shelter for them. And then learn about and emulate nature's processes rather than upsetting the balance of the ecosystem. Yeah, keep pesticides and fertilizers out of your home if at all possible. Reduce pollution by eliminating pesticide and fertilizer transfer into your property. Create habitat for locals and support healthy soil biodiversity rather than contaminating soil chemicals. So we think, we talk about fertilizers and we talk about all those things we've got to add, you know, we go to the store to buy it, you know, whether you're buying organic or non-organic, all the fertilizers or anything that's sold as a fertilizer has three numbers on it. Uh, and people often would say, well, what do those three numbers mean? And that's the NP and K, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium all has to be in that order and they basically the nitrogen is for upgrowth it's for leaves stems and new growth the phosphorus is for down growth for the roots and the potassium is all around overall health of the plant cold tolerance things like that so keep those in mind when you're looking at it and your soil sample will tell you if you're deficient in any of those three Non-organic fertilizers, they all have those numbers on there, but generally they're gonna be higher like the 2020 20 year. Organic fertilizers generally are gonna be smaller like the 332 here. 
Uh, if you are curious if it's an organic fertilizer, uh, it'll either tell you or it'll have the OMRI label, which is the organics label, uh, which is going to be listed on there. You talk about natural fertilizers, alfalfa meal, uh, blood meal, bone meal, corn gluten meal, cottonseed meal, feather meal, fish meal, fish emulsion, green sand, kelp meal, gypsum, lime, on and on and on. We can, you can have several pages of those they, because they come out with new ones all the time. Uh, just look at those as options. Now, look as you look at them, you see the numbers are small. So it's something that you're gonna to have to add on a periodic basis, not just one shot, but that's okay. You know, it's better to have, uh, like the doctor tells you, better have lots of little meals than uh, one big meal. Compost is one of the probably the most critical parts of organic gardening. The more compost you can get in the ground, the better. Uh, it's very nutritious for our soils and plants, aerates the soils, uh, aids with drainage and promotes microbial activity. So make it, buy it, whatever you have to do, but get some compost into your soil. And that's when you, you know, if you did the soil sample that tells you where your organic matter, it'll tell you how much is in there. And that's basically where we're gonna get organic matter is from good, well-finished compost. Mulch, you know, once you get it all planted and you get it all, all amended, you've got to mulch it whether you're growing gardens or you're growing flowers, or you're growing trees or shrubs or whatever it may be. So I just used one as an example. It's a double shredded hardwood, uh, maintains the soil temperature, aids in moisture retention, got a nice natural brown color, not chemically treated, aids in weed prevention and decomposes and feeds the soil. That's the most important thing right there. Decomposes and becomes your fertilizer and becomes your nutrient addition to your soil. Once the thing we came up years ago with the uh, earth kind method of uh, gardening, which we promoted all around the world, was compost to once, mulch forever. You don't need to pull the mulch back to add more compost because the mulch is breaking down to form your own. Organic components, uh, lots of great products out there, too many to even list like we talked about. So. Here are just a few that work for each and every time. Green lace wings, the addition of green lace wings are to your garden are, are gonna be great. They're a voracious predator. They feed on eggs. They work well with other beneficial insects. The adults do not eat as many pests as the larva stage does. So remember that, uh, you know, encourage that. Know what the larval stages are so that you don't try to get rid of them so that you have the, the major Part. Beneficial nematodes, you know, we have some non-beneficial nematodes in the soil. You know, how do we, how do we combat that uh, organically? Well, we have beneficial nematodes. They're really tiny, they're microscopic, but they're an organic way to control grubs, fleas, ticks, and ants. You apply it with a pump-up sprayer and spray it out into your yard. They're microscopic. Uh, they'll feed on the larva pests and sometimes uh, even the above ground adults. Ladybugs, they use to control them aphids naturally. They are aphid eating machines. They're beautiful. A natural predator for several others, including scale, mealybugs, leafhoppers. Uh, best to put them out at night where they can get out there and chill out before they have to get busy eating in the morning. Water the area before releasing them so it's good and damp, not too wet, but good and damp. And they will stay as long as there is food. Garlic pepper tea recipe, you know, people like that. Uh, I like garlic, I like peppers, uh, so why not use it? Uh, it's good, it's a garlic bulbs and the cayenne and ha uh, habanero peppers mixed. And a quarter cup of concentrate per gallon of water and spray it out, it works really well. Olive oil soap spray for those Italians that like it, like that olive oil. Two teaspoons of extra virgin olive oil, teaspoon of ivory liquid soap, uh, used on aphids and mealybugs and whiteflies. Again, put it in a pump-up sprayer. Uh, it's good for roses and milkweed plants. Uh, best applied early in the morning or later in the evening. Baking soda or soap spray. Heaping teaspoon of baking soda, a little bit of ivory soap, 
works wonderful for powdery mildew and other fungal problems. So we have a number of fungal problems with the uh, uh, weather that we have here sometimes. So it's a great way of using it, again, in a pump or sprayer. Uh, Serenade is a uh, organic control. Uh, it provides fun protection against fungal and bacterial. It's non-toxic to bees and other beneficial insects. It's good against black spot, blossom end rot, and powdery milk with it. Not harmful to any of the fruit and vegetables and it comes in a spray form. Horticultural oil is one of my favorite things. It's used on spider mites, from scale, leaf roller, white fly, mealy bugs, you can name it. It can be used as a seasoned spray or a dormant oil. It can be applied to overwintering of eggs, good for trees, shrubs, sh fruit trees, and roses. Just remember, uh, during the fall and winter, after everything goes dormant, a lot of the insects lay the eggs on the bark of the tree, and then they're there, and, and they hatch out in the spring. But if we cover them with a light coating of oil, it'll suffocate them, and that helps start off the season right. BT or Bacillus thuringiensis is used on worms, including bagworms, armyworms, hornworms, caterpillars, uh, best applied at dusk. It's a natural bacteria that works wonders. It's not harmful to anything except the particular thing that's labeled on that label. Neem oil uh, comes from the seeds of the neem tree. It reduces insect feeding and acts as a repellent. Limits insect growth and laying of eggs and used on squash bugs and, and leaf hoppers. Last but not least is 20% vinegar, you know. What what can we use that on? Um, a lot of different things, but mainly for weed control. Uh, and it's a lot higher. It's not the same vinegar we get at the store. It's a horticulture vinegar. Uh, but, you know, it's it's okay. It will work on contacts on weeds in the root system. It's non-discriminate. Uh, it will kill and burn any plant that it touches. So be careful with that. It also won't kill you, or, or I guess it could, but it, it can burn you very severely if you're not careful. So you be sure that you use appropriate uh, methods of uh, clothing and gloves and don't spray into the wind and all those kinds of things. Orange oil uses ant killer, works tremendously. Uh, numerous ant mounds in the garden, essential oils from the cells within the rind of an orange. You can't get much more organic than that. Use on fleas, aphids, mites, uh, ants, kills within minutes of contact. Uh, it's even, I mean, it's even so good to put it in, in furniture polish. Diatomaceous earth, that's something a lot of people have a misconception on, you know, I'm gonna spray diatomaceous earth. Well, it's a powder, so it's gonna be hard to really spray it. So you have to dust it. And people talk about, well, I'm gonna spray it all over the tops of my plants. Well, it doesn't do too much good because it is used to kill crawling insects. So they actually have to crawl over it. It has um, little bitty tiny organisms in it that in there, it's almost like crawling over glass. So it cuts all the insects up and causes them to dry out and die. So it's gonna be something that you're gonna apply to the ground or on the base of the plant uh, for them to crawl up and crawl across, not something you're gonna spray on tops of plants. Dry molasses is another good thing to help build up the microorganisms in the soil. Uh, there's a lot of good uh, all-purpose organic fertilizers, just, just one. I'm not saying ladybug is the best, ladybug, I'm sorry, but it is one of the many out there. Uh, the liquid or granules, fish emulsion, seaweed, uh, weed work really well. Uh, liquid soaks gen directly into the roots. Uh, stimulates microbial activity and uh, super thrive is great for new transplants and struggling plants. Bone meal, another great one. Falfa meal is another great one. Earthworm casings you can hardly beat. Uh, you know, it's simply the, the what the earthworms eat and then they leave it back for you. Very rich. Uh, it doesn't burn the root systems, a little goes a long way, and it really helps with drainage and aeration. So those are just a few of the ways of uh, adding things to it that are organically. Now we're going to tell you a few things on what to do in the garden on how that might help you. So 
soil inoculants. Uh, a lot of our uh, vegetables and things now are inoculated uh, in order to help stave off the issues in the first place. Uh, so there's a lot of great things out there, but the main thing they're inoculated with is a mycorrhiza fungi. You know, think, well, I'm trying to get rid of fungus. I don't want to add fungus. Well, there's some beneficial fungus out there. And if we can add that, that can, and gets in and activates around the root system of our plants, it can double, triple, quadruple the root system of the plants so they can pull in more nutrients and more water and survive through the hot or cold, whatever it may be. So. Soil inoculants are very, very important. Soil preparation, the better you can prep your soil, the better off you are. Uh, here's a ex, our old colleague of mine, uh, Bill Adams, does a wonderful job on tomatoes. And so he, this is one of his tomato gardens. He uses raised beds because he can control the soil. Uh, his soil is not necessarily good where he's at. So this way he raises it, gets better drainage, uh, it just improves overall growing of it. Uh, as you see, he's doing a really good job. And so think about soil preparation. You know, you may want to have some really tall raised beds. And the inter interesting thing about some of our insects is they, they don't like height. Uh, they'll crawl around on the basis of, uh, basics of your plant and around the bases of it. But you put it up three or four feet high, they will not get up there on most cases because the higher up they are, then the more uh, available they are to the predators or birds to come in and pick them off. So that's one way of doing it and a, and a great way. You just look at all that new soil you got in there. Uh, all different kinds of raised beds, you name it, every different kind of style, big, little, wood, plastic, barrels, you name it. Organic gardening doesn't mean that you don't have to spray or fertilize, sometimes you do. Sometimes you've got to put some, um, whatever it may be, some kind of fertilizer, whether it be liquid, it be powder, it, you know, uh, compost tea, et cetera, et cetera. You've got to do some additions in order to address issues that are coming up and let the plant tell you if it needs it. Feed me, in this case, you know, the plants are saying, hey, I need some food. Uh, uh, you know, I'm yellow, I'm weak, I need to have something done. Uh, you know, we're getting, falling over, we're getting, you know, not enough support, whatever it may be. So maybe it's a foliar spray and maybe some other type of spray. The last resort is that if the soil is really bad shape and you can't get rid of the noxious weeds and you've got some insect issues and, and you just can't control it, then you can always always solarize it. And that's simply putting black plastic or plastic over and letting the sun heat it up. But remember that kills all of your beneficial things that are going on in your soil. So you have to start all over again. So that's the last resort. You know, here's something to show you some of the different diseases. Uh, you know, you've got to be able to recognize what the diseases are in order to be successful. And you may want to take the plant out. You may want to address the fact that it's got too much water or not enough water. Uh, and the bottom, you know, when you have a nematode issue, whatever it may be. Trap crops and rotation, you may want to look at doing that. Instead of going out and spraying, you know, maybe we put in something that uh, traps the nematodes in the root system. Maybe we put out some marigolds or calendula. Maybe we put out, um, Elbon cereal rye, that's what you see on your right. It's just a, a modified cereal rye grass that traps them in the root system. So, you know, and then you go around and it comes springtime, you turn it right back into the soil and it really makes a big, huge difference. Uh, you may uh, use something else, some traps, insect traps on, to show that you've got them or help control the little ones. Uh, maybe some type of uh, daikons or maybe some type of other a uh, plant that will trap them in there. You may want to have uh, some type of peas that do that. You're going to have to irrigate one way or another. Uh, so it's not an optional thing in most cases. This year with all the rain, you know, it's hard to say, but 
um, you know, we got to do something. So it may be furrows, it may be drip irrigation, micro sprinklers, hoses, overhead, uh, the clay pots that you see here that we you bury in the soil uh, and they fill them up with water and they just, the water oozes out to feed the plants. Lots and lots of different ways of doing it. Uh, you may need to prune them. You know, at some point you may need to prune things in order to keep uh, some of the diseases out of the way. Uh, you may need to cover them. You know, the row cover, that's the white that you see here is great in the fact that it helps protect from sun scald, it helps protect from some of the insects, it helps protect from too much heat, too much cold, uh, but still allows the plant to grow. Here is some uh, welded wire that's been used as uh, tomato cages to put around for the, the row cover to be on, so that works well. So lots and lots of different options there. Mulch them and cover them. So mulch it really good with shredded leaves, uh, mulch it with uh, shredded hay, uh, mulch with whatever you have that will go back in, shredded grass clippings. Uh, and then you may want to put some type of cover crop, you know, uh, in the summer when you're not using it's too hot or in the winter when you're not using it, put in some type of a cover crop uh, black eyed peas, uh, the Elbon cereal rye, and things that we talked about earlier. And they will help you tremendously in order to keep your garden going. It doesn't just happen to make compost, you got to work at it. You got to chop things up, you got to add things to it. You got to add fertilizer, you got to add water, you got to add whatever it may be. And it, so it's some work, but you know, it's well worth it because that compost. Is the best thing you can add to your soil no matter what you do. It's just simply broken down, decomposed organic matter. That's what it should look like. Uh, it's a soil enrichment product. You should be able to pick it up and take a big whiff of it. It should smell like earth. You may have a good smell, not rank, not sour, not bad. Uh, you know, none of those things. You want something that's going to really be beneficial. You may need to figure out how you're going to spread it. So here's some compost spreaders. You know, here's one on your left. You know, and if you got a bigger area, that has a small motor on it. The middle one is just a, a bin that you can put it out. And the one on the right is the oldest way of doing it. Is just simply a, a a big tube with a grate on it that, as you push it, it sifts it out. Uh, you may need to buy it. You know, you need a large amount to get a dump truck load of it. But make sure that you before you go buy it, make sure you go buy it and look at it. Make sure it's not, it's finished. Make sure that when you run your hand through it, uh, it doesn't burn your hand. Uh, make sure when you go pick up a handful, you can't say, oops, there is a oak leaf and there's an olive leaf and there's a, you know, whatever kind of leaf. You don't want to be, you want to see maybe there's a leaf, but you sure don't want to be uh, able to see what it is because it should be already decomposed. You may be just grinding your own up, back on the right. Hope I didn't offend any cat people there. Uh, here's a, you know, if you got a bigger area, you may want a bigger compost spreader. Uh, and that's a, it does for large acreages. Compost tea is another great thing that I think is wonderful and people just don't use very much. It's, just, it's, it's kind of like making sun tea. You know, you put that great big jar of sun tea out on the porch and, and, and let it make some stew out there. It's simply making, putting compost in water. You fill a container half full of compost, you know, like in uh, some kind of a mesh bag or something and then fill the rest with water. Let it set for 24 hours, dilute it and spray it on the foliage of the plants. Be sure to strain out any of the solids out with old pantyhose or cheesecloth or floating row cover. Uh, full string tea it makes an excellent fire ant mound drench that you can use. Uh, mix it with two ounces of molasses and two ounces of orange oil per gallon. Yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful way of treating it. Aerate any compost mixture prior, uh, whether you're just stirring it really good or you're putting a little aquarium pump in there. Uh, lots of different ways of doing that. If you're going to get out and spread it and you got a large area, put it in a big sprayer. Put it on, behind, on your truck and just drive down and spray it. That way you can spray 
large gardens or large acreages. Uh, but if you're going to make it yourself, that's good. You can make it at home. You can have something like the left one that's a little bit bigger than just a normal home. Uh, but the right one is is uh, perfect for home. It makes all the compost tea you can use. Uh, if you know you decide you like it so much, you want to get in the business, make get a big compost tea maker where you can do lots and lots of it. Organic gardening again may not be the easiest. It may not be the least expensive. Fruit, vegetable, and flower production generally is going to be less productive and and a less of aesthetic quality if you don't use it. Whether it's the lack of synthetic chemicals or the extra work, organic gardening can be much healthier for your and your plants. Organic gardening also prevents the chemical runoff, the death of aquatic creatures and water pollution, death of beneficial insects and other critters, and in general creates a healthy life. One of the best things to think about is harvest frequently. If you're doing vegetable gardens or you're doing whatever you're growing, don't let them sit there too long. Uh, if the plant, if you're doing vegetables uh, and you know, the plants start falling down and rotting on the ground and you're not picking them up, then that can create all kinds of fungal issues and all kinds of other issues. Uh, if you're growing herbs, uh, you know, some people like them herbs for the flower, but if you let them go and uh, get too much flower on it, it makes the herbs not as palatable. So Grow a few for the flowers and grow a few for just uh, the herbal value. Hope these tips were helpful and encourage you to garden organically. Uh, there's so many more out there uh, that will help you on this journey. It may take you a bit longer than non-organics, but I guarantee you it'll be worth the wait. Start off slow, take baby steps. You'll be surprised in the difference it makes to you and to your family on how you're doing it. So. Once again, do you want to be the dollar tomato, the dollar and a half tomato, or the two dollar tomato? Just think about it. You know, I encourage you to take one small organic st start, one step, and maybe just do nothing but add compost to your soil. See if it doesn't help you. See if you don't benefit from it. And if it does, take one more step. Maybe start putting mulch on your around your plants letting that break down into the soil and creating more compost. Uh, and then from there, I, I guarantee you it won't be long before you get hooked and you will become a great organic gardener. It benefits you, you benefit your family, it benefits the environment. Well, do it this way, uh, virtually we don't have any time for questions or a way to do it. And that kind of takes some of the fun out of it. But I wanted to do to give you the number of the Tarrant County Master Gardeners or TCMGA. They're a wonderful group of people I had uh, the privilege of working with for 20 plus years. Uh, you can call them at 817-884-1944 and they can answer all your questions. They can send you handouts on organics and lots of other gardening issues. Uh, and they're just great people, great people to talk to. We finally at the office, finally got uh, the answering machine. So now you, if you call uh, when it's not during the day that times are open, you can leave a message and they'll get back to you. So hope this helped. Uh, hope that you benefit from it. Hope that you enjoy organic gardening and happy gardening. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Bye.